Well, thank you very much. I'd like to begin by thanking Chris for his uh, very nice introduction. But more importantly, to thank him for all his work while serving the U.S. government at a time when I had the privilege of representing Colombia and working very closely with him. Making trade agreements with Chris was never easy. But uh, at the end, we remain friends, and he's been very good. Uh, by everything he, he's done in, in his commitment really to, to free trade and, and I'm happy to also be here uh, to thank uh, Bob Bastien and the, the CSI for their great work in, in keeping uh, really the, the, the importance that services provide uh, to trade and to integration but more importantly to keeping the flag of openness in trade which is so fundamental to keep, no matter what the time, especially these times of economic turbulence. I want to also uh, acknowledge uh, my friends, the Ambassador of Argentina, Hector Timmerman, and Ambassador Valivieso of Peru, and to say to all of you that it's really a privilege to be here. And when one thinks about globalization and global challenges, including, of course, rising competitiveness, Asian economies, financial uncertainty, uncertainties and instabilities, increasing energy prices, and certainly what we will see in the years ahead in terms of inflationary pressures. Problems facing the Doha development ground and climate change are challenges that we see as critical for the IDB and in every country of the inter-American system. And a moment of crisis calls not for recoiling and turning our backs to liberalization, as I was saying earlier, but for closer trade integration and liberalization. One of the key means of guaranteeing growth and well-being is trade. In times of turmoil, exports have served as a countercyclical force in the hemispheric economies, propelling growth and economic stability. Through good times and bad times, Trade has been the anchor of our economies throughout the post-war era. And you only need to look back at the last time Latin American economies went to many of the debt crises of the 80s. And it was really through export growth that we were able to get out from many of the crises in the past. And while the external shocks and the competitive pressures on the Latin American region have grown, Another great transformation has occurred in global commerce that strongly affects Latin American nations, and that's the rising trend of global trade in services. During the 20th century, service activities were reserved for the developed world. Over the past decade, however, developing economies have emerged as strong competitors with increasingly complex service offerings. This shift has been driven by the attraction of firms to developing countries for their competitive advantages, in some instances low cost for re human resources, but also for technological skills and more importantly for language proficiency. Ser service exports from Latin America have grown markedly since 1990 at some 7% a year. In 2000, the estimated export service balance to Latin American countries was $5.5 billion, and forecasts for 2007 and 8 are in the neighborhood of $10 billion, and about another $200 million in addition to that for 2008. In 2008, Brazil had about 30% in service exports, Mexico about 19%, Argentina 12.5% and Chile almost 9%. And, it, and, they, and they were basically the main service exporters of our region. But growth in the sector in Argentina, in Brazil, in Chile, in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Mexico, and Peru in the past five years has been around 58%. Despite this growth, the share of services exports of Latin American economies remains low well below world averages. Services exports now constitute some 2-3% to of Latin American countries' GDP, as opposed to 11% globally. 
Moreover, of all trade, services account for only 13% in Latin America, lowest number in every region of the world. Latin America is still very heavy in goods and in the more intangible services sector. Of the four modes of services, the, re the region is still very heavy in business, travel, and tourism. There are some 40% of the region's total in services. Transportation is about a third of the total. In the Caribbean, the situation is different. The services sector is now two-thirds of the region's annual GDP and more than 70% of jobs. As many of us know firsthand, mostly this is around the tourism sector, but there are also new arising areas ranging from consulting to marketing and advertising. Health services, now that we talk a lot about healthcare in this city, are particularly promising given the region's capable doctors and nurses and proximity to the aging U.S. market. And I can assure you, if you take 20 of the top medical interventions in any one hospital in Latin America, they are about 20% to 15% of the value that are in this country. And quality and coverage-wise, they're much better. So here's an opportunity to do south. Also significant way is the service activities, including tourism, which have become that they are no longer possible to consider in the Caribbean's future as anything other than services based. Despite the fact that global services still are dominated by India and Asia in general, there is a great opportunity for Latin American countries to diversify its services exports, especially towards high value added services. The remarkable rise and constant change in information and communication technologies is a particularly exciting and important sector for the region. As you know, the market for the new services in IT, in business processes, in knowledge processes, has been growing at double-digit rates in the past few years to a remarkable number of $70 billion in 2008. Latin American and Caribbean countries would reap great development benefits from increased trade in services. The services industry is becoming one of the most significant drivers of trade and foreign direct investment in our region. Globally, services have gained in importance as engines of growth, and they, of course, help in job creation, they have technological spillovers, and they have innovation and export diversification attached to them. And what is often overlooked by boosting infrastructures, productivity, and competitiveness, great services also boost good exports. The real challenge for Latin America is now twofold. One, to increase its share of the global services trade, and two, to move up the value chain in services. In IT I and mean, business processes, the region currently has only 6% of the world market, as opposed to 37% held by India. Latin American countries have the potential to become, in this area, an important player. The good news is that Latin America has tremendous natural advantages for services. We offer the advantages of a near-shore delivery location, as our friends from FedEx will tell you, similar time zone with the U.S. market, low-cost multilingual capabilities, cultural affinity, and ready available talent. Latin America is also a region to go into search for alternatives for reducing risks and diversifying away from dominant IT platforms or business processes and knowledge process destinations like India. But Latin America faces a tightening global competition for services. Asian giants such as India are blanketing international.